Right, sure. I mean, I, I guess the, the first place to start is why do you, why do you feel you, you've had to do this today? Why, why are you in such bullish mood? I think it, obviously we've had a tough start to the season, and you know, we're, I'm, I won't sit here and make any excuses about this, that, and the other. We've not been good enough. That, that's a fact, and not a problem for that. And if people want to criticise us for that, that's definitely their right. But what concerns me is some of the language that's just been used against this club, and this club doesn't deserve that, our fans don't deserve that, our staff and players don't deserve that. Um, but also the nature of a sense of, you know, whether it's supporters or whatever, giving up on, you know, because everyone said, oh, Norwich have already given up, they're already relegated. We, we've played nine games, we've got 29 games to go, and, and if that's going to be our mentality, then it's going to be a long old season of, you know, suffering. Um, and I think it was important to come out and front it up as a club side because you know you always have the head coach talking or players and you know now's a time where you know we need to look after them a little bit as well um, but also come out and you know put a few facts right but also talk about that you know we've got a good squad we've got a good manager um, and we can achieve this we're going into a run of important games and we need everyone behind us and we need people to believe that we can do this because if the people who come to watch the games don't believe it, or the players or the staff or whatever, then we've actually got no chance of being successful. And you know, everyone says oh, it's the same as two years ago. You can't compare two years ago. The squads are so different. It, it's scary. This squad would hammer the squad of, of two years ago. Um, and I know results haven't backed it up, and I, and I respect that. And, and the criticism which will come back my way for that comment, fine, no problem. But you know, what do we do now? Do we sit back and, and get knocked out or do we come out swinging a little bit? And I felt it was time that we come out swinging and I think for the supporters and everyone, we've got to protect our club and our city and our community now um, because we've become the laughing stock and we have to change that. And I know that starts on the pitch, but I think as a community, we should be hurt by the way people are talking about our club, which is, you know, run by fantastic British owners who've got the community at heart, all the work that we do. And we're being spoken about as if we're, yeah, just some nothing club who won a lottery ticket to be here. We earned the right to be here. We've got 97 points. So, you know, yeah, we need to produce on the pitch, but we also need to have a bit of a mentality as a collective with supporters, board members, staff, players of, no, no, we need to show people and we need to grow a pair and, and um, you know, sort this out. Yeah, you used the word laughing stock there. And that's true, isn't it? I mean, there has been a lot of talk in the, the national media in particular. And, and how, has that, how has that made you feel? As a club, I mean, you must be hugely hurt by that, I would say. Yeah, I think, because well, most of it's unfair and most of it's not factual. So, if we're going to get heavily criticised after losing 7-0 at Chelsea, we can't say anything. You have to take every comment on the chin um, and everything which was said was fair because it was embarrassing and, and not good enough and, you know, not representative of what this football club is about. But when people say they've not had a go, they've banked the money and run, they've given up already. Now, that is completely unfair. You know, we're the 11th highest spenders in Europe. Now, have a go off of spending poorly, not a problem. But don't say we haven't spent or we've not had a go. You know, we've invested in infrastructure. You know, we've got a Premier League training ground now. We've got a Premier League fan base. We've got a stadium which is full every week. You know, how many clubs would love to be able to sit there and say that? You know, we've got a thriving community programme. You know, we have higher support or engagement than any other club would have in the Premier League. So we've got so many things to, to celebrate and be grateful for that when people talk about our club um, and the people within it as if we don't care, we've given up, we've banked the money, I, I get deeply offended by that. And, you know, you can either sit back and let people just beat you up or eventually you have to start punching back. And, and today was about that because it's not fair. On the 300 staff who work here, who give their lives for this football club, for our supporters who turn up every single week supporting us, for the players and the staff who work so hard every single day, the comments aren't fair and we can either sit back and let, you know, we've been being bullied a little bit or the only way back to, against the bullies, you've got to fight back. As if you're going to sit there and bully, you will just keep bullying you, you know, and, um, and that's what we need to do. Now we need to back up on the pitch, that's the most important thing and no doubt people will criticise a little bit what I'm saying to them, oh yeah, just win a game, mate, and they're right. Absolutely, the best way to sort this out is by winning football matches. But at the same time, the noise has become too much and too unfair that it, I felt on behalf of the club, um, it was time to speak up and um, put a few of the facts right. Yeah, and, and that noise you talked about there, do you think that's translated to the fans? Do you think that's translated to the players? Do you think there's almost an acceptance that Norwich don't belong at this level? Yeah, I think it has to an element to the supporters. Um, I think, you know, the last couple of home games have felt a bit like that, a bit flat and, oh well, you know, we're in the Premier League, it won't last long, we're back in the champ next year and, 
you know, it definitely hasn't resorted to the players. I think what people have to remember as well when people talk about the run last time, it's a different set of players now. So this isn't the same players going, oh, yeah, we got beat, whatever it was, at back end of last time, we were here 10 games. Um, so it doesn't concern me one bit, it's seeped into them. But it has, I believe, into the crowd. And, and I understand why, because that's what they read. And if we don't set the narrative straight, you know, they you read what you get shown and whatever. Um, but then that does seep onto the pitch. And... You know, we need supporters here who believe in this set of players, like they did five months ago when they're celebrating them all. It's like, no, they need them now. This is a moment where you know we've got a young team, um, lots of players who haven't played at this level before, new to the country. You know, I don't think our new signings have have seen the best of Norwich fans yet. You know, the fans where when we were selling the club to these players, we pridely talk about about our supporters stick with you through thick and thin. You know, yeah, they have in terms of numbers, but I think in terms of vocal support, uh, there can be more. And I think in terms of not joining in with Sons, taking the mickey out of ourselves, I don't think it's helpful singing that how rubbish must you be, we're drawing or whatever. That, nah, that, that's that's not good. You know, a thousand Brighton fans out singing us here. Nah, that's not right, you know, and that performance deserved a bit more. And if the supporters are going to accept that, and then we all are, well, we're in for a long, hard winter. And if that's what people want to accept, whatever, fine, no problem. But... I can't sit there and accept that. We're better than that. Our supporters deserve better than that. Our club deserves better than that. And we can achieve it. If I didn't believe the quality and what we had, to be honest, I wouldn't be using these words. Two years ago, I sat here saying, we weren't good enough. We made mistakes. This is different. We are good enough. We've got to prove it, absolutely. And maybe I'm wrong. But the fact is, I truly believe. And I think anyone knows whenever I speak, I, I tell people what I truly believe. Doesn't mean I'm right. Absolutely not. I'm, I'm wrong for sure, lots of times. But I wouldn't be sat here going, I believe we're good enough if I didn't, because we are. Uh, but we've got to show it now. And the players who step out on that pitch Sunday, whoever they are, have got to represent the Norwich shirt and what's it about and what we're about. And win, lose or draw, it's about the level of performance and giving our a bit of pride back to our supporters and to ourselves. Um, and then... You perform, results come. I truly believe that. But we, you know, this is a time now as a collective. We all have to stick together, not start pointing fingers or listening to what someone on a national station says somewhere who doesn't know anything about us and doesn't care about us. Don't listen to them. You know, you wouldn't listen to some fella down the street telling you your missus is ugly. So why are we going to listen to someone on a radio station or in a newspaper who's never probably even been to Norwich? Wouldn't be good enough to play for us for sure. So let, why are we listen to them? Ignore them. Come on. The flip side of that is that fans will say, well, come on, you need to produce on the pitch, don't you? And, Absolutely. and not winning any of the first nine games is, is unacceptable in terms of the results. You'd expect better than that, wouldn't you? So what would you say to that? Do you think they've got a point? 100%. No, listen, I, I want to be clear here. We have got to do a lot more. And it's up to us as a club, as people who go on the pitch, the people off the pitch, to turn this around. Not the supporters or the media or anyone else the only people who can affect it is then players who go out on that pitch on Sunday who cross that white line um, and the criticism has been absolutely fair from our supporters I don't mean the criticism nationally where people have got facts wrong that's not fair I've got an issue with that by all means say we're not good enough but don't say we haven't had a go because that's a lie that's, that's completely untrue um, but the only way we can turn it around is we have to do that we're in control of our own destiny there and we have to give hope back but we want the fans and we need the fans to be invested in that. We need them to turn up with a big performance as well for us. We need our players to walk out of that tunnel at two minutes to two on Sunday afternoon with a sense of, you know what, everyone's with us today. Let's put in a performance. We need to drag that ball in the goal because that's what we need now. And, and we've got intelligent fans, we've got great fans, I believe, who understand when a team needs a help and the team and everyone needs a help at the minute. If everyone turns up with their glass half empty, we won't win. That's for sure. I can guarantee that. If the crowd is flat, there's no energy, and there's two and a half thousand Leeds fans taking over the stadium, we lose a game. We need it to be like, you can't hear their fans. This is about us. This is Norwich City putting in the performance. Because we don't need the fans when we're 7-0 up or 6-0 up or two minutes to go in a playoff final, winning 2-0 and it's job done. It's now. This is the minute where we, we need them. But absolutely, the responsibility is on us to, to produce a performance and to, to reward that. Uh, but come on, let's stick together now. That's the beauty of a club. We're only here because it's here for supporters. So, of course, the supporters are invested in the mood of the place and stuff because if not, why would football exist? Yeah, very true. 
one of the accusations that's been chucked at Norwich is that they haven't spent any money. And that's rubbish, isn't it? You know, you spent 70 million quid. You, as you said, you're the 11th highest spenders in the whole of Europe. Yeah. But what is fair is that they haven't really produced on the pitch yet, have they, the, these new signings? And, and what, would you, what would you say to that? Do they need to do better? Everyone needs to do better. From top to bottom of the club needs to do better. Um, I think it's unfair to say some haven't performed yet. I think some have performed very well. Others are taking longer to settle in. Lots have come from different backgrounds. And that takes time in what is an unforgiving league. But at the end of the season, we can assess that. Please don't write players off now. You know, they, they're all good players. Whether they're good enough to be Premier League players and help us stay in the Premier League, we're going to find out. But they're all good players and they're all fantastic human beings. So don't write them off after watching them in an away game at Man City or Chelsea where they've had a bad day. Um, again, stick with them. You know, they're good players. They've, I think they've, every single one of them has shown flashes of what they can be. Um, and now we need to we need to get uh, behind them. But absolutely, the the myth that we haven't spent is, is a ridiculous myth, and and it shows, to be fair, in certain circles, a lack of intelligence in journalism. But certain areas, are, it only you don't have to Google what we spent, and you can find it. It's not harder. My five-year-old son could could work that out. Um, but some of these people haven't got maybe the intelligence to do that. Um, but whether we spent it wisely, we'll find out at the end of the season. And by the way, if we haven't, guess what? We'll front it up. No problem. We'll talk about it. it it's, there's no one hiding here. There's no one making excuses or blaming it. It's on us and you know, we have to turn it around. But we need people's help to turn it around and we need people to believe in us. And we can't be... Let's not become the laughing stock. We're the laughing stock on the outside at the minute. We've got to turn that around. But that's every single person's responsibility in this area to be like, don't... Don't laugh at us. We're a proper football club and proper people and we're a proper area and we deserve to be here. We didn't win a prize. We deserve to be here. Um, so let's not almost laugh at ourselves. You know, let's show a bit and fight, fight a bit back, you know. So you're a proud man and you must hate losing every week. It must be, must be awful for you. And do, do, do you kind of feel that everyone has got that appetite to succeed that you've got at the club, do you think? Yeah, 100%. I think, I promise you, no one's slept well for the last few days for sure. Um, you know, supporters, and I understand this, always think players don't care, staff don't care. I challenge you to go and sit in a dressing room after a game. I challenge you to be at the training ground the next morning after a bad defeat. It's, you know, you look at a group of blokes who haven't slept, who are angry, uh, who are frustrated, you know. It, it's, their, it's our pride, it's what we do, you know. What happened on Saturday, I promise you no one was hurting more uh, than me, Daniel, the players. I promise you, because it's not possible. Um, but it's part of life, it's part of sport, you lose and you have to come back and you have to have a mentality of we've got to prove people wrong now, we've got to get back, we've got to get back on this. Um, but it hurts like hell, you only have to ask anyone who's in my company after a defeat and it's not a nice place to be and you know, someone said to me once you'll get better at losing, I can't, I, I cannot handle losing, I can understand losing, that's, that's sport. I understand it. It's part of the process, unfortunately. No team wins every game, but yeah, it's, it's not a nice place to be, but um, in the day, we've got to change that and we've got to bring that winning feeling back and again, only we can do that. No one else is going to do it for us. You know, We're not going to get any help from the opposition or referee or whatever. We've, we've got to do it ourselves and we've got to believe we can do it ourselves and if, if we don't, then we, yeah, we've, we've got a major problem, but we, you know, uh, we believe we can and uh, I truly believe we will. Yeah, you're desperate to get that winning feeling back. Do you still believe that Daniel is, is the right man to deliver that? You still got complete faith in him that he can turn this around? Yeah, I mean, you only have to look at his record. It's, it's, you know, he must be one of the most successful managers in, managers in the club's history, I'm, I'm guessing statistically. Um, of course, you know, but it's, again, it's not about one person. You know, it can't just be, oh, change Daniel and the whole, we'll start winning again. Okay, if it was that simple, I'm sure that's what everyone would would everyone do. But you know, it's a collective responsibility. We're all we all have to own this. You know, the players who cross the line, the people who produce the pitches, the stewards who welcome our supporters to a game. We we all have to own this, um, and no more so than me. You know, I sit at the top of the organisation on the on the football side. You know, it, the buck stops with me. So, you know, if, if there's any questions, it, you know, it isn't necessarily about Daniel. You know, but. It's it's about us, and unfortunately, with the head coach, and it comes as part of the job description, is you're the guy who stands in the dugout, and you're the ones who everyone and eyes look on. It's not the assistants, or you know me, or whatever, and you know, and he knows that he can't, that, 
it's not stupid. It, it comes with it comes with the territory, and you know, um, you know, pressure's a privilege as well. You know, we're very lucky that we're in this position where we're playing in the best league in the world, and we're under pressure because we need to win a football match in the best league in the world. You know, we could be in the bottom of the championship where no one cares, or we could be in League Two or whatever. So you know, this club's been in League One. It, it knows, let's say, let's be honest, really hard times. So it's about um, now it's about sticking together and believing we can turn it around because you know we know we've got the quality in the squad. We know we've got the quality in the backroom staff. So, but now we've got to go and do it. You know, and yeah, that's it. Let's get on with it. These next five, five games are, are pivotal, aren't they? Looking at the fixture list, they they look fairly winnable compared to the, the fixtures that you've had so far. If, hypothetically, you weren't able to um, get the results in those games, do you think you'd have to look at Daniel's position then? Um, I think that's difficult to say, because I think you've got, it's about performances, in my opinion. It's, you know, we could win 1-0 on Sunday and be terrible. We could lose 1-0 and hit the bar four times and have a load of possession and, and be a really good, look a really good team. I remember we got beat here 1-0 at home to Stoke in the promotion season. It's actually the best stand innovation I've ever seen because I think everyone said I'll tell you what that was a good performance we just got we lost by a deflection goal I think off Tim Closer I think it was um, so I think the most important thing is the performances and that's where it starts we have to perform well in these upcoming games to give ourselves a chance of points and you know but to get points in the Premier League is so hard you know that's why there's two other teams who haven't won yet you know who are much more experienced and established at this level than than us and much more experienced managers and Daniel and, and, Sean, um, and Sean Dyche and um, obviously Steve Bruce obviously has left but it's it's incredibly hard to win games at this level but we need to believe we can uh, we can do it and you know if we can't we can't when we and we look at things but we've got to take away this being constant Daniel 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 likewise when we're winning it can't be oh Daniel Daniel it's like well no the whole club's responsible for winning um, the whole club's responsible for losing and, and that's all that matters is a club and now's the time to be looking at all of ourselves because nobody's doing well enough whether that's me the board the players the staff you know this is a big organisation of which you know we can't all be patting ourselves on the back when we win of oh I'm doing a great job and then when we're not oh he isn't doing a great job it's like no we stick together whether we're winning or losing and um, you know at the minute is the time to be sticking together yeah from the outside, people look at the table. You're only on two points. But you're not. You're not cut adrift yet. Is there, is there still that absolute belief within you, the players, Daniel, etc., that this this will get better and you can still stay up? You can still achieve that. Hundred percent. Yeah. You know, we've played nine games. You know, of which we've played some incredibly difficult games within that. And let's be honest. If we would have had one win now, we'd probably be sat here going, oh, "Okay, it's not too bad a start." So we're not a million miles away from what would be deemed as maybe acceptable on the outside. You know, we have bigger goals maybe on the inside, but absolutely we can do it. Absolutely. And if not, we need to just not bother to turn up for games. We need to believe we can do it. We've got enough quality, that is for sure. Um, but we need to go and produce it. And, you know, that's, that's, that's the key. Um, but the belief in everyone is definitely there. And now we need to go and, uh, yeah, we've got to go and turn it around. And if, if it does fail, let's hope it doesn't, but if it does fail, does that prove that the self-funding model doesn't work in the Premier League? No, I disagree, because Burnley's self-funding models work. Newcastle is self-funded, Brentford is self-funded, Watford don't overspend, so yeah, I, I disagree with that. I think it's become too easy an excuse to use as oh, self-funding, self-funding, let's just sell and get someone who spends a load of money, OK? We've seen lots of clubs spend a lot of money, get relegated and never to be seen again as well. So I think it's... Yeah, it's too basic to say that the self to blame this on a self funding model or whatever. We've 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 got more than enough tools to be successful now at this level, um, and it's not easy. But we need to go and do it. Yeah, and finally, it's a, it is a huge game on Sunday already, isn't it? Against a team that's struggling as well. So, what's your message to the fans? Any any Norwich fans that are coming on Sunday? Is it get behind the teams and don't bring any negativity into the stadium? Yeah, support the team. Support the team. We all want the same thing: supporters or staff or players. We want to win a game. There's not one person. Well, there shouldn't be one person here who goes, oh, we get beat today. You know, so come with a positive mindset and look at, let's help the team, not... Because not, I guarantee the Leeds fans will be there helping their team from the first minute to the last. So we need to help ours and, you know, have a bit of pride in that and be part of turning this around. You know, we're happy to celebrate ourselves when, oh, great atmosphere, we won the game. Fans, well, OK, well, we need a great atmosphere now. We don't need a great atmosphere when we're playing Liverpool at home or whatever, because whatever, that looks after itself. These are the games where, come on, turn up and support the boys and get behind them and have a bit of pride in the guys who were only heroes five months ago. They're not now villains, you know, and if, if people think they are, then that's incredibly naive and short-sighted. So 
get behind them and then ultimately it comes down to us to reward that and um, yeah I'm sure we will